good morning all welcome to today's video so in this class we will be dealing regarding some of the specific heart disease during pregnancy and their management so rheumatic heart disease it can be divided into mitral stenosis and aortic stenosis and also in congenital heart diseases it can be divided into cyanotic that is left to right shunt atrial septal defect patent ductus arteriosus ventricular septal defect and mitral valve prolapse and in cyanotic that is right to left shunt fallow stratology and asymmetric syndrome so first we will see regarding rheumatic heart diseases that is mitral stenosis and aortic stenosis so what do you mean by mitral stenosis it is a commonest heart lesion met during pregnancy normal mitral valve area ranges between 4 and 6 cm so the main symptoms usually appear when stenosis narrows this to less than 2.5 cm usually the valve area is 4 to 6 cm so in mitral mitral stenosis what will be happening narrowing of the valve that is it will be less than 2.5 cm women with the mitral valve area less than or equal to 1 cm have the high rate of pulmonary edema that is 55 percentage and arrhythmia rate will be 33 percentage in asymptomatic cases the mortality is less than 1 percentage but once it is significantly symptomatic mortality ranges between 5 percentage and 15 percentage diagnosis and management has been mentioned earlier during labor continuous continuous epidural analgesia is ideal and intravenous fluid overload is to be avoided place of valvotomy so it is better to withheld elective cardiac surgery during pregnancy surgery should be considered in cases of unresponsive failure with pregnancy beyond 12 weeks best time of surgery is between 14 weeks and 18 weeks valve replacement can be done in this condition then commissurotomy also can be done so it is a surgery that helps to promote blood flow through the heart valve then balloon valvotomy can be carried out in early second trimester then atrial fibrillation is a complication then digoxin beta blockers and anticoagulation heparin should be used next we will see regarding the aortic stenosis most cases of aortic stenosis are congenital some are rheumatic in origin normal aortic valve area is 3 to 4 cm in mitral stenosis normal valve area is 4 to 6 aortic valve area is 3 to 4 cm when it is reduced to less than or equal to 1 cm stenosis is significant significant aortic stenosis is about 15 to 20 percentage with perinatal loss of about 30 percentage epidural analgesia is contraindicated during labor fluid therapy that is 125 to 150 ml per hour should not be restricted left ventricular afterload is high and the pregnant patient is sensitive to hemorrhage common symptoms are angina syncope and left ventricular failure medical management is not helpful in a symptomatic patient valve replacement is the definitive treatment then mechanical valves need anticoagulation open heart surgery is preferably avoided in pregnancy aortic balloon valvoplasty may be done as a palliative procedure so hope you understood next we will move on to congenital heart diseases so with the increasing number of surgical correction of the congenital heart lesions from infancy to adulthood more and more pregnancies with the congenital lesions are met in day to day practice these patients pose little problem in obstetrics but when pregnancy occurs in uncorrected congenital lesions problems are very much there especially in a cyanotic group risk to the offspring of congenital heart disease is high that is 3 to 13 percentage major maternal risk in pregnancy are cyanosis left ventricular dysfunction pulmonary hypertension the common maternal complications are congestive heart failure pulmonary edema arrhythmias then hypertensions all women should be fetal echo echocardiography examination uh, should be done in a mid pregnancy to find out these cases so first we will see regarding the asynotic that is left to right shunt atrial septal defect or asd or other name is ostium secundum type it is the most common congenital heart lesion during the pregnancy 
even uncorrected ast will tolerate the pregnancy and labor as well means if you are not at all doing any of the correction also she may deliver without any complications then congestive cardiac failure unresponsive to medical therapy require the surgical correction if we are doing medical therapy and the congestive cardiac failure not responding or not improving then it is need some of the surgical corrections shunt reversal is the major risk which may be develop in hypovolemia such cases may occur in hemorrhagic conditions and following injudicious administration of the epidural analgesia anesthesia in the absence of arthemia and pulmonary hypertension asd does not usually complicate the pregnancy so hope you understood the atrial septal defect next we will move on to pda that is patent ductus arteriosus what do you mean by pda presence of continuous murmur at the upper left sternal border is suggestive of the pda so there is a presence of continuous murmur we can feel at the upper left sternal border most patients with pda will tolerate pregnancy well pulmonary hypertension may cause maternal death if the mother have pulmonary hypertension it may cause death surgical correction during pregnancy can be performed and it is provided there is no pulmonary hypertension epidural analgesia is better to be avoided to minimize the shunt reversal due to systemic hypotension fetal loss may be up to 7 percentage and there is 4 percentage chance that the child is the child of this parent will suffer from the same abnormality endocarditis prophylaxis should be given next we will move on to vsd that is ventricular septal defect what do you mean by vsd in general if the defect is less than 1.25 cm square pulmonary hypertension and heart failure do not develop pregnancy is well tolerated with a small to moderate left to right shunt or with a moderate pulmonary hypertension the major risk is shunt reversal leading to circulatory collapse and cyanosis hypotension is to be avoided and fetal loss may be up to 20 percentage next is mvp that is mitral valve prolapse so mitral valve prolapse is a commonest congenital valvular lesion most of them are asymptomatic and women will tolerate the pregnancy and labor well and endocarditic prophylaxis should be given so that is regarding the asynotic heart disease next we will move on to cyanotic that is right to left shunt first one is fallow tetralogy so it is the most common form of cyanotic heart lesion it is a combination of ventricular septal defect pulmonary valve stenosis right ventricular hypertrophy and overriding of the aorta all these four conditions are there we can call it as tetralogy of fallot after surgical correction patient tolerate the pregnancy well surgically uncorrected patients are at increased risk complications like bacterial endocarditis brain abscess and cerebral embolisms are more common maternal mortality is 5 to 10 percentage and the perinatal mortality is 30 to 40 percentage then iugr is common systemic hypotension is dangerous which may lead even to death epidural or spinal anesthesia is avoided pregnancy is discouraged in women with uncorrected tetralogy next type of cyanotic heart disease is asenmenger syndrome so patient with asenmenger syndrome have pulmonary hypertension with shunt there is right to left shunt through an open ductus an atrial or ventricular septal defect will be there then maternal mortality is about 50 percentage and so also the perinatal loss 50 percentage then termination of pregnancy should be seriously considered heparin should be used throughout the pregnancy as there is risk of systemic and pulmonary thromboembolism then epidural anesthesia is contraindicated inhaled nitric oxide or iv prostacyclin is used as a pulmonary vasodilator to maintain hemodynamic stability pulmonary artery catheter and a peripheral artery catheter are used the main complications are ccf hemoptysis arthemias cerebrovascular accidents and hypoxemias then hyperviscosity syndromes and sudden death so hope you understood cyanotic and asynotic heart diseases 
So in asynotic heart diseases, we have learned regarding atrial septal defect, patent ductus arteriosus, ventricular septal defects, then mitral valve prolapse. In cyanotic, that is right to left shunt, we have learned regarding fallow to tetralogy and acin mangers syndromes. Then hope you understood this class. In next class, we will be deal regarding the other congenital heart lesions like coarctation of iota, Marfan syndromes, primary pulmonary hypertension, etc. So if you are understanding my classes, please subscribe and share to your friends. Thank you.